I will drop a few ideas of mine about the role of technology in um, reshaping uh, the organization and the structure of public administration. Some of them, uh, I think, we go quite, quite against the more widespread ideas of what technology uh, should be and should do in the context of public sector reforms. But these are ideas that um, I uh, come through when uh, I first uh, start studying the use of technology in the public sector. Just a, a small snapshot. Um, when uh, I start my uh, academic, academic experience, I was teaching a course on e-business, the use of technology to support business activities. And at a certain point, I realized that 10 years ago, governments were using more and more technologies in a very similar way as private companies um, did. And therefore, in my course, I started teaching a couple of lectures about the use of technology in the public sector. After a couple of years I was teaching these um, lectures, I realized that something was happening. Uh, the investment in ICT in the private sectors, I'm talking about the year 2000-2001, uh, didn't lead to the expected outcomes or the investment in ERP, knowledge management system, customer relationship management, and so on and so forth. And most of the policies and the strategies that we are studying about the use of technology in the private sector suddenly became very common in the, in the public sector. And then I question myself, can I teach a course of e-business talking about public administration? Well, that is when I realized that, yes, I could have done so, and that is what is often happening. People are selling ideas of the use of technology in the public sector that are exporting without any changes from the uh, private sector. But then I realized that there is a fundamental difference, that public sector organizations ought to have a different goal compared to private sector organizations, and maybe that what is often considered as a customer of private organization is not exactly the same as a citizen for the public uh, administration. And the reason is that customers can choose among different providers, and customers are usually rewarded on the base of their contribution to the profit generation of a private company. I'm a frequent flyer with an airline, and because I spend a lot of money with an airline, I get more as a customer of the airline, which means I get better services. Now, if we look at the way in which in most of uh, democratic uh, or Western uh, states uh, things work, if you are a very uh, rich citizen, you pay a lot to the state in terms of taxes, but you are among the citizens that are supposed to receive the less because the welfare is supposed to generate and to deliver services to the people that are contributing paradoxically less to the public administration. And that is where I engaged with, uh, with my research. And I realized that one of, this is, is at least my opinion, one of the things that is uh, very often neglected in uh, the studies of uh, e-government is that when we are talking about the government, we are talking about the reorganization of the state, but we are talking about politi political reforms and organizational cha uh, changes that are designed to provide a profound transformation of the state. And therefore, we should question what is the social, political, and not only economic outcome of this investment in information and communication technologies. But if we look at most of the studies in the e-government domain, the attention is mainly focused on the economic returns of investment in uh, ICTs. And this is, I think, something that um, has to be challenged, because technology is not only having economic impacts, but is having social, economical outcomes. And therefore, when we are uh, questioning, studying, designing, thinking, uh, implementing information and communication technology in the public sector, well, we should be uh, more open to the um, 
assessment of the actual outcome behind the narrow-minded um, approach that is only looking at the outcomes in, term, in terms of economic terms. So somehow, I'm here suggesting that when we look at technology in the public sector, we have to take a broad uh, um, approach to the study of the overall outcomes and implication of these technologies, being as much open as possible and trying to use as many indicators as possible so that we will be able, at the end, to assess the uh, political outcomes in terms of public service delivery and public sector organization that are uh, associated to the uh, design and implementation of information and communication technologies. Now, this is, I think, also confirmed by the fact that when we look at uh, investment in information and communication technology in the public sector, the government, we, um, from, from studies and um, reports about the outcome of this investment, we can see that very often e-government is not delivering the uh, expected outcome, or, and I think this is what is more interesting, is or can deliver outcomes that are different from the one that initiated a specific project of the adoption uh, of the uh, ICT in the public sector. And if we look at uh, government documents that back up the investment in ICTs, and we look at the way in which these technologies or this project are assessed 10 years afterwards, sometimes we see that there is a, a huge discrepancy between the logic or the rationale behind a specific project and what is assessed in terms of outcomes after uh, 10 years or 5 years uh, whatsoever. Therefore, uh, we have, again, not only look at what is delivered by technology, but we have to look at what is the in term of transport, transformation of the public administration. Now, this is also, I think, confirmed by the fact that when uh, e-government policies are not delivering what they are expected to deliver, we hear often the argument that is a, this failure is a temporary status, that is just a problem of get into the next stage in the technological development or in the reform of the public administration to achieve the expected outcomes. However, technology is not only uh, a, an instrument and a tool uh, through which we can uh, improve the way in which the public administration is working, but is also an instrument through which we can change the nature of the public administration. And therefore, we should question what is the outcome of these uh, changes. Now, if we look at uh, most of the, the, the project and the policies related to the use of technology in the public sector, we can see that technology is often conceived as the silver bullet to sort out most of the problems of the public administration. Most of these pro uh, problems are uh, described as problems related to the cost of running the public administration and the efficiency associated to the public administration. In a nutshell, uh, very often e-government is considered as a response to the failure of bureaucratic organizations and a way to overcome the limits of bureaucracies, choosing a different way to deliver services. And here, I uh, refer, and I know this is a simplification, but at most of the new public management ideas, the new public management ideology, that is suggesting that using uh, private sector uh, strategies and solutions, uh, it is post managerial practice and managerial solutions, it is uh, possible to improve the quality of the outcome that is delivered by the public administration. So, one of the um, fundamental ideas, I think, in the discourse is backing up the argument of, behind the need of uh, reforming the public administration is that bureaucracy is a problem and we have to find out a way to reduce the spread of bureaucracy like an octopus that is getting everywhere and we have to cut the tentacles and we have to try to find out other organizational solutions. So, bureaucracy is conceived as a problem for public sector organizations. Now, having said that, I think we have not only to look at the problems that are 
with no doubt uh, associated to the performances of bureaucracy organiza bureaucratic organizations, but we should also look at the reason why bureaucratic organizations are the most common organizational structure in the public administration. Now, I don't want to go back to Berber and um, to uh, the history of bureaucracy, but we can see that the bureaucratic organization that is um, relying on coordination mechanisms uh, based on rules and re regulation is a structure that is being historically designed to reduce the uncertainty of organization activities and to create a uh, mechanism to deliver services, to deliver uh, organizational outcomes that is uh, making uh, the same service available to every person that is interacting with the organization without any uh, constraints related to the space and time where the service is delivered and the person that is receiving the service. Now, this, uh, I, this reason behind the use of bureaucratic organizations in the public sector is uh, connected to the fact that bureaucracies can be considered fundamental pillars of democratic states, of modern democracies. Why I am uh, claiming this? Because bureaucracy is a mechanism that is designed to make the state uh, acting in, a, in the same way uh, towards every citizen. Now, I, I know that this can often be seen as a problem because citizens are not the same and we should be able to treat citizens in different ways. And this comes again from the idea of citizens as a consumers. Consumers are different and they are looking for different services. Now, if the state or the public administration wants to deliver different service to different citizens, this is a choice that has to be backed up by a rationale. Now, when we are looking at technology as an instrument to overcome the limitation of bureaucratic organization, this argument is seldomly done. The argument that is done is that bureaucracies are a problem and technology can deliver services using different channels and therefore to increase the efficiency in the service delivery by the public administration. And this, I think, is neglecting the fact that public services are, the value of public services is also shaped by the channel through which the service are delivered. Not only, the new public management ideology that has driven most of these policies of public sector reform and use of technology to reform the public administration are deeply embedded in a political discourse about what the state is supposed to be. Now, I think that nobody here is interested, I am not, in the discussion of the value of the political ideology of new public management. What I want to uh, highlight here is that when we choose to use the drivers proposed by new public management to design technology to reform the state, we are not using a set of ideas of theories that are political independent. Therefore, when we are designing technology to reform the state, and for example, to use more market-oriented mechanisms to uh, deliver specific services, we are making a political choice. I think that one of the main problems that is um, affecting the discourse about e-government is that e-government is often considered something that does not have to do anything with political choices. It is mainly related to choosing a specific technology to achieve specific performances that are politically independent. Now, every choice of technology, as we will see later on, is political dependent. And when we use technologies to change the instrument through which 
services are delivered, we are having an impact on the quality and the value of the services that are delivered. And so therefore, we have to ask if this change in the value and the quality of the service delivered is something that is behind the strategy of designing that technology, and in this case is clearly extremely valuable, but if it is not, I think that we are missing something about what will be the broader impact of technology in the reform of the state. Now, having said that, I want to say here that the design of technology informed by the new public management ideology is not the only possible solution. There are other solutions that are not very often discussed, and therefore, I think that we should enrich the um, opportunities and the will of opportunities behind the design of technology, better understanding uh, what are the different logics that can be used to design information and communication technology to reform the public administration. So, as I said, technology can also be used uh, following different logics than the one of the rationalization of the public administration, of the reduction of the spam of bureaucratic um, structures in the organization of the state. And I think that one of uh, these uh, opportunities is uh, offered by looking at technology not only as an instrument to overcome bureaucratic organizations, but rather and a, as a possible, a possible solution to um, support bureaucratic organizations, which means to make bureaucracies working better and therefore to deliver the service, yes, in a more efficient and effective way without changing the nature of the service that are behind this specific organization uh, logic. So we can conceive what I call a, an e-bureaucracy strategy, where we value what the bureaucracy is providing to public sector organization, which means impartiality, maybe impartiality and equality in the level of services, and then we question if we can use technologies to reorganize and to support the um, world of bureaucratic organizations so to deliver better services without changing the organizational structure which is used to uh, deliver the services. In a nutshell, my argument is that bureaucracy is good, is nice, and we should be committed where it is possible to maintain this organizational structure because this organizational structure is adding specific values, such as the one of impartiality and equality, to the services that are delivered. And if we change the organizational structure that is used to deliver these services, the service will have different value because they will be delivered through a different mechanism. We can design technology not only conceiving bureaucracy as the problem behind the failure of the ability of the public administration of the state to deliver services, but we can consider bureaucracy as one problem, but the problem is not in the characteristics of the organization structure, but is rather in the ability of this organization in handling rich and very complex uh, information flows. What um, is um, behind this idea is that before we question the reason before to change bureaucracy, we have to question if bureaucracy can be redesigned along the uh, line of legal, rational, normative and rule-based structures so to improve the capability of this organization to uh, deliver services in a more equal and um, unified way around a specific country, around a, a specific um, set of administrative activities. So, so here we are um, advising that it's difficult to benchmark the way in which bureaucracies deliver services vis-a-vis 
a market like solution, for example, through the outsourcing of other services, because the two way of delivering uh, services, the one that is based on using technology to support their bureaucracy and the one of using technology, for example, to use the market, cannot be compared because they deliver different kind of services. And the reason why these services are delivered are different is because the mechanisms through which they are delivered make the difference in terms of public uh, violence. So one of the reasons why bureaucracy have failed over the years to be efficient in delivering services is because bureaucracy has struggled after the mid of the 70s when the state was dealing with more and more um, activities um, in terms of public service delivery, the, the bureaucracy has failed in uh, efficiently and effectively coordinate all the information that is needed to deliver these services. And here is where it comes, the technology. ICT can help bureaucratic organization to become, once again, effective in, in using all these informations to coordinate the activities and to deliver services without the need of changing all these, um, the, the, the apparatus which add value to the service that are delivered. Very quickly, if we accept that when we look at ICTs in the public sector, we have to go beyond the um, effect that technology can have on, on the efficiency of the legal service, but we are looking at the way in which ICT is having, uh, is having an effect on um, the um, social political uh, value that is delivered by public sector reform, well, we can see, for examples, that uh, when we are looking about the government, we are looking about instruments that alter the state cities relationships. For example, they change the nature of the service delivered, they change, they can create inequalities like digital divide among citizens, they can uh, delete uh, certain services, or they can offer new way of interactions. Or, well, all these changes are actually designed into technology, and technologies have specific architectures, and technologies are often um, inscribing political, temporary political values that will last longer than the political ideology that has pushed or uh, informed their design. So one of the things that we have to consider here is that technology makes politics. Once we design a specific architecture, the technical specification of the architectures will define the window of opportunities for future design and development of ICTs in the public sector. Which means that when a government is taking a decision about a specific architecture or specific solutions, is making a decision about the future windows of opportunities in terms of technological change and technological design. So, we have to keep in mind that it's not the politics or the public administration which is always choosing the technological solutions, but often the choices made in the past about technologies are defining what will be the future windows of opportunities for the um, e-government uh, policies. Therefore, and here uh, I, I conclude, when we are looking about the use of technology in the public sector, we cannot rely only on one narrow set of indicators as often happens, that is, the effect of technology on the reduction of the cost of running the public administration, but we have to question a broader set of outcomes. This broader set of outcomes is, yes, related to the economic impact that technology can have on the delivery of specific services, but is also having an impact on the future windows of opportunities for the public administration in choosing and deciding what the changes will be or what the government policies will be in the future, and is also having a broad impact on the value of the services that are delivered. So if we want to have a, um, a richer understanding of the impact of technology in the public sector, we have uh, to question the effect of technology in the specificity of the domain of the, domain of the public sector.
the very last provocative sentence, and I swear I conclude here, I think that in, because of the increased investment in technologies that every government is doing around the world, we can end up in a situation where e-government policies can have the same role or the same value as constitutional choices and constitutional um, articles. That if I design a technology that is not allowing changes in the future in a specific uh, service delivery, I'm making a choice that is not dependent and related to the contemporary choice of one government, but will define the window of opportunities for future governments. So I think we have to keep more into consideration what is behind technology in terms of political and social outcomes to be able to understand what is the impact of the choices that we are making in a specific moment of time. Thank you very much.